The Storm Scepter is a new pollution prevention device that effectively removes sediment and oil from stormwater and stores them for safe and easy removal. Its unique design, which prevents resuspension or scouring of previously collected pollutants, makes the Storm Scepter system a practical and effective BMP for a variety of applications in stormwater management. This program is a general guide on how to prepare and install a Storm Scepter Model 900. Larger units may use different size sections and parts, however, the installation concepts are the same. The total Storm Scepter unit is delivered in multiple concrete sections. It is important to verify that all components delivered to the project site correspond to approved plans and shop drawings. Any damaged products or missing parts should be reported to your Carter Concrete representative and noted on the delivery ticket. Concrete sections range in size from 72 to 144 inches ID and weigh from 10,000 pounds to over 30,000 pounds. Adequate lifting capacity for unloading and installation is critical. Spreader bars with three or four lifting cables are required to reduce risk of damage to the edges of individual sections. Excavation for and the installation of storm scepter systems should conform in general to local and state specifications for the construction and installation of concrete manholes. The number of concrete sections delivered will vary depending on specific project requirements. Other factory ship parts and materials include rubber gaskets for use with all concrete joints, gasket lubricant, a plastic vent pipe, plastic down pipe with T, plastic up pipe, and metal clamps for attaching incoming and outgoing sewer pipes. PVC adhesive and polyurethane caulking are included for attaching pipes to the fiberglass insert section. Flexible rubber boots on the bypass chamber section are factory installed for connecting upstream and downstream storm sewer pipes. Storm scepter ring and cover are also included with shipment. The general installation sequence for a storm scepter system involves the following steps. Build up and level a sub-base of aggregate material as required. Install storm scepter concrete base section. The concrete storage chamber section. A transition slab if required, then the concrete bypass section with fiberglass insert. Next, install PVC up, down, and vent pipes to the fiberglass insert. Add concrete riser sections to meet grade. Install cover slab with access hole. Place storm scepter ring and cover onto top of unit. Backfill up to inlet and outlet storm sewer pipes. Connect storm sewer pipes to unit. And last, complete backfill to finished grade. Contractor supply tools and materials needed for preparation and installation of the system include ladders, rubber gloves, cleaning rags, a screwdriver, level, caulking gun, and wire brush lifting cables, D-rings with bolts, and a spreader bar will also be required for unloading and installation of concrete sections. Location and size of excavation should conform to the alignments and elevations of approved plans and shop drawings. During excavation, be sure to allow for adequate space to connect inlet and outlet storm sewer pipelines to the installed storm scepter unit. Shoring, bracing, or ground stabilization should be considered as needed. At the bottom of the excavation, build a solid bedding layer of compacted aggregate subbase. Subbase thickness should conform to required plan specifications. The vertical squareness of an installed storm scepter depends upon how level this bedding is, so be accurate with leveling the base section since there is very little chance for elevation adjustments after this section is set. Base slabs, transition slabs, and lids have three V-shaped cable connectors that accept cable hooks attached to a cable spreader. Vertical concrete riser sections are manufactured with either four coil bolt inserts or three key type inserts. Storm Scepter 72 inch sections use a one inch coil bolt or key inserts, while 96 to 144 inch sections use only one and a quarter coil bolt inserts. Contractor supplied slings and cables should attach to approved D-rings that bolt into one inch or one and a quarter inserts precasted in the walls of vertical concrete sections. Attach D-rings with the appropriate size bolt and tighten. A similar lifting method involves a key type lifting device. Simply insert the key and turn to lock into position.
Attach lifting cables from vertical sections to a spreader bar and set into position. Do not use center pick slings for handling vertical sections as this method will damage the spigot's rim resulting in loss of gasket seal when the pieces are connected. During installation process, be sure to verify that the base section and additional sections are level. Clean the spigot on each section with a wire brush and remove any dirt or concrete that may prevent the rubber gasket from a compression seal. Verify gasket is oriented properly and stretch onto the clean concrete spigot. Place a screwdriver between the rubber gasket and spigot surface and move the screwdriver around the entire circumference to equalize gasket volume. This is similar to moving your finger behind and around a rubber band that is stretched more in one area than another. A different method to equalize gasket volume is to grasp the gasket and pull it away from the spigot. Repeat this procedure around the entire rim circumference. Next, apply a gasket lubricant to the gasket surface. This will help additional sections to seat more easily. Clean and lubricate the bell surface of the concrete piece to be installed onto this section. When setting an additional concrete piece onto a section with lubricated gasket in place, be careful to align the new piece as exact as possible and slowly allow the weight of the top section to settle onto the bottom piece. Any raising or adjusting will likely damage the gasket, resulting in a joint that will not seal properly. Verify elevation and position of the storm scepter bypass chamber section to ensure that job site sewer lines will reasonably connect. Align bypass chamber so that a stormwater pipe entering the unit empties into the weir part of the fiberglass insert. Reference approved shop drawings to confirm correct alignment. The 6 to 12 inch PVC downpipe has a plastic T on one end. Dimensions will follow shop design plans. Install downpipe by coating the outside pipe end with PVC primer, then PVC cement, and push the pipe into the coupling located on the underside of the weir. This installed section is either 16 or 44 inches long, depending upon the storm scepter's unit size. The T must be oriented parallel to the wall of the storage tank. This alignment will allow stormwater to flow in both directions along the sides of the tank and not directly into the wall. Next to the 24-inch up pipe is a hole for insertion of a 6-inch PVC vent pipe. Attach with PVC adhesive and extend this pipe upward to approximately 18 inches from the top cover slab. For models 2400 and larger, an extension piece must be inserted into the existing 24 inch opening from the top side of the fiberglass insert and sealed with polyurethane caulking. The invert of storm sewer inlet and outlet pipes should reasonably match the invert of the fiberglass insert. To connect, center pipes in the rubber boots and fasten with metal clamps. Tighten clamps adequately and check seal. Lubricant may help in sliding the boot over a connecting pipe. Pipes larger than 30 inches in diameter will not connect with rubber boots and should be fitted and grouted by the contractor. Position top slab so the access hole is located over both the 6 inch vent pipe and the 24 inch up pipe. This is necessary for owner's maintenance and cleaning procedures. To assure customers of quality products and performance, all storm scepter units are hydrostatically tested at our factory prior to shipment and include documented certification. It is important to review this video and understand its content. Improper preparation or installation can cause the storm scepter unit to not function properly. Final inspection, prior to owner's acceptance, should include removal of dirt and debris from the unit. Storm scepter units will require periodic owner maintenance, including visual inspections and clean-out procedures.